Hello, Internet, and welcome back to another blockchain vlog. In this episode, I'll be demoing Mist on Chromebook, how to build your own geth like client and run your decentralized apps on an Asus Chromebook. That's right, a ruggedized and water-resistant design for only $200, and it's a top three seller on Amazon, and it can be yours to run Ethereum, Akasha, Uport, or anything else. Let's get started with the developer setup. So once you've got your Chromebook unpacked, it's really easy, just press escape, the little refresh button, which is where your F3 key is, and power. You're gonna sit there and it's not gonna do much for about 30 seconds, but give it a little bit of time and a screen like this will pop up. You're gonna wanna press Control D on the first screen and then enter on the second one. In general, you just gotta read the instructions if it's not clear, just press Control D. Again, we don't wanna turn OS verification on because we're entering development mode, so just Control D. And here we are, it's transitioning to developer mode. We didn't have to type anything, just hit a couple of keys. Uh, unfortunately, this process does take about five minutes. I've sped the video up here, as you can kind of see. Uh, but after the five minutes is done, it's preparing. You can plan to wait a bit longer throughout this. So maybe get some tea or coffee ready, have a snack or a sandwich. It can take a little bit of time. After a little bit of rebooting, you get back to one of these funny screens. Again, just press Control D. Just as you would expect any other time opening this up and running through it, you're gonna to have to connect to a Wi-Fi network and enter some credentials. Uh, I've sped this video up again because it's pretty common and self-explanatory, but you're gonna need a Google account. Once you've got this up and running, the first thing you wanna do is bring up a browser and head on over to github.com. I know that's kind of long, but you're gonna need a couple of links from this page. Uh, to help you get set up running Linux on your Chromebook here. And a few of these tools will make the process a whole lot easier. Once the page loads, you're gonna be inundated with information. Don't worry, all you need is a link here in the top. It's goo.gl slash fd3zc. Just click on it, you'll get a small file download in Chrome and you can open it up and see it there in your downloads folder. It's called Crouton. It's not very big. And then we need to open up a special tab. Control-Alt-T. That's gonna bring up the Chrome OS developer shell. This is why we had to use those commands in the beginning. So once you're here, you're gonna type the word shell and hit enter. And that will drop you down to a pretty standard Linux prompt if you've ever used that before. From here, we're gonna to have to type in a couple of commands. This is where it gets a little hairy. If you're not used to typing commands on the terminal or only used to gra graphical interfaces, this might be a little tough. Just type the things along with me and uh, if you get any errors, just read what the message says and we'll work through it. The first thing you wanna type is sudo sh tilde slash download slash crouton dash T XFCE dash R trusty. And what this is gonna do is install a special shell for Linux to live in. It's gonna use the XFCE graphical environment, which is lower resources compared with GNOME or KDE. And we wanna use the trusty release of Ubuntu, which is a bit newer than the default. Uh, it's still a couple years old, but uh, it will work for our purposes and it's well supported. The installation process can take a good 15 or 20 minutes. So again, go have a snack, step outside and take a walk. Uh, I've sped through the process here a little bit. I just wanted to show you how much is actually involved so you know what to expect, uh, but I don't expect you to sit here and wait for it. Uh, we're gonna let this finish up installing and get going again here.
just a little bit of time remaining now. It's finalizing everything, it's downloaded and installed. And now it's asking for a username for the primary user. This is gonna be your separate Linux username, uh, which is different from your Chrome OS login tied to a Google account. So you can make this pretty much whatever you want. I've created an account for Dilbert here and type in a password that you'll remember. Once this is done, it will drop you down to the shell again and you're all ready to go pretty much. You can go ahead and open up the new Linux container. The whole process of installation is pretty much done. Uh, we've got to install a few more components within there, uh, but before we do that, let's hop in. Just sudo start xfce4 and hit enter. Before we get going any further, I just want to highlight here, you can use the default configuration when it asks uh, this question on startup for the first time. And also a good thing to show you would be how to get out of the environment. What you do for that is go up into the upper right corner. From there, you'll just click log out and you'll be prompted again and you'll just hit log out again. And what that will do is take you back out into the Chrome environment. So if you just want to use it for standard web browsing, that's where you'll do it. If you want to do something special with Ethereum or Mist, you can start XFCE4. Don't forget your sudo in the beginning and that'll pop you over. The last thing I want to, to go ahead and do is install an integration between the two environments to allow for clipboard copy and paste and make things just a tad easier. Uh, this is technically optional, but I just wanted to show you if you did want to do this, it's a simple extension that you download on the same GitHub page. You're going to scroll a little bit down to the prerequisites and there's a link here which I've highlighted. You just click that and it'll load up the Chrome Web Store. So if you've ever used a plugin before, this should be pretty standard. Just add it to Chrome, let it do its thing and you should be all set to go. And that completes our setup of the laptop itself. Next, we'll move on to application installation. If you're still stuck in Chrome OS, don't forget to sudo start xfce4. And once you've loaded, open up terminal and type in sudo apt-get install git build essential. This is gonna install a couple of things. One is the git tool, which we'll use to go and grab our source code. And the other is build essential, which is common on many Linux systems when you want to build software. Since we plan to build get, we're gonna need both of these sets of tools. This might take a minute or two to install, not a whole lot of time, so I wouldn't go anywhere during this process. Uh, but once it's done, you wanna go ahead and open up a browser. The Golang tool, uh, which is the language component that it's written in, we haven't gotten that downloaded and installed. The version that is ready for the version of Ubuntu we're using is very, very old and unsupported by the team. So we're gonna to have to go get a custom version. Uh, the nice thing about this is that we can update this whenever we want and we have full control over the particular version we're using. Again, I'm assuming we're using a 64-bit edition. So I'm gonna download the 64-bit Linux edition of Go 1.7.5, which is the latest at this time. Once that goes ahead and downloads, you can close through that screen, close your browser, get back to your terminal, and we're gonna type a command to install the software. It's actually gonna be a few different things. This is the trickiest part of the whole thing, so don't fret if you have some problems. There's a lot of commands. Just make sure the spacing and quotes are correct. The first command we wanna type is sudo tar dash c slash user slash local dash xzf and then the name of the file. 
Now, instead of typing the full name of the file, I'll usually type the first few characters, in this case, G01, and hit tab. Tab is an autocomplete, so it will finish the file name for us. It makes typing long names a lot easier. Once you've done this, the binary is moved into place, but we need to tell the system where to find this, and that's done through our bash RC file. We're going to type a couple of commands which will append some information to our bash file, and that will tell our system where to find the particular files. Not just the Golang binary, but once we build and install get, it needs to know where that's located too. So I type these couple of commands. We're not going to have any output if things are successful, and this is part of the Unix philosophy of no news is good news. After we're done with these commands, we're going to use the source command to reread that file and pick up this new information. If you've done everything correctly, you can type go space version, and that should output the version of go installed on the system. If you get an error about not being found, you need to stop, go back, and verify all your commands have been typed correctly. The next thing we're going to do is create a location for a geth binary to live. We're going to type make third p dollar sign go path slash bin. This will make the directory if it doesn't yet exist. And finally, we're going to go ahead and clone the go ethereum repository down and build it now that we've got everything into place. So git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash ethereum slash go dash ethereum dot git. I put all the commands on the screen to make it a little bit easier so you can pause this video when you need and type that in just right. This also might take a minute for it to download and resolve all the commits, uh, but it doesn't take too, too long on a modern machine with relatively decent internet speed. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do once you've cloned the repository is type the word make. And what make will do is actually build get for you. And this is part of the build essential tools that we installed earlier. After get is built, we need to copy it from its local path here, build bin get, and put it into a standard location that our system knows about. So we just have to type get in the future rather than giving it the full path. So we're going to type CP for copy space build bin get and another space dollar sign go path slash bin. And this copies the get binary to the binary location for go programs. Once we've done this successfully, we can now type get space of version and get version information to make sure it's installed correctly and responding. If that's working out okay, the very last step is actually start it up and start syncing. Uh, the reason I like to do this ahead of time before I start MIST is that it can take a few minutes to connect to the network, even in light client mode, uh, to find some peers. And this just lets that process get started while we're doing other things. I will start churning through blocks once it finds some peers. And once you're happy that it's connected and doing its thing, we'll leave that in the background as we carry on with a few other items. All right, everybody, we're in the home stretch finally. We're going to go ahead and start installing MIST. This is the part you've been waiting for. I know it. Fortunately, this is pretty graphical and not that difficult. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and install a couple of prerequisites. Uh, you would have a problem with this later on if we didn't install this in the beginning. Fortunately, I've run into these issues, and this should hopefully resolve it for you. First, we should type sudo apt get install libindicator1, libnss3, and libxss1. These aren't so much requirements of MIST as so much as the 
package it's built upon, uh, but we need these nonetheless. The next thing you want to do is open up your browser again and start to bring up the missed release page. You can find that at https colon slash slash github.com slash ethereum slash missed slash releases. Once that page is loaded, go ahead and scroll down and you're going to want to find again, assuming Linux 64, so you'll grab missed Linux 64 at the type of the writing it's 089 and you want the dot deb version because we're running a Debian based operating system. Go ahead and download to disk. It'll take just a few minutes to download, which uh, sped up the process here. So we don't have to wait too, too long. When that's completed, you can close that down or head back over to your terminal. I brought it up from my background here. And I just check what's in the directory uh, with an ls to make sure it downloaded. Or you can go ahead and straight away and type sudo dpkg-i. And again, just type the first few letters, missed, and hit tab to autocomplete. Don't forget on Linux that casing is important, so you need that capital M for it to find it. Uh, but once that process is complete, assuming there are no errors, you can just head on up to your menu in the upper left, find other, and there appears Mist with its icon and everything. Integrated right into the OS as you would expect. We're running a separate window for Geth just to make sure it's running in light client mode and to have full control over that. While that's running, Mist will use that invocation of Geth rather than the built-in one. Again, the nice thing is you can update this at will and if new versions come up, with additional support for Whisper or Swarm, we can start to use those before the Mist team has made a release, which makes things a little bit more fun. Here Mist is loading, it sees the peers and blocks synchronizing. And as it slowly loads up here on my Chromebook, you can see the interface just as we'd expect. In the bottom left, you see the block synchronizing and slowly the page is loading for our wallet. And here you go, a brand spanking new Wit Mist with our wallet. Uh, we have our account overview here, Geth Lite running in the background. And we could use this setup to install Akasha or a variety of other decentralized applications, as long as they pretty much all fit within that 16 gigabyte uh, SSD limitation that these machines often have. Assuming that you're using Light Client, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But here it is, Mist on Chromebook. This is a great setup if you have a few crypto coins that you'd like to protect or you'd like to play with this on a separate device that's not your main laptop. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, please, please, please comment down below. I thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, smash that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and I'll talk to you another day.